Hi YouTube, it's Mike with HHO Connection. I'm here today to show off my latest contraption. Um, what you have here is a portable 12 volt HHO torch system. Uh, the purpose of this project was actually twofold. I, I wanted to build myself some sort of a portable HHO demo unit, something I could wheel around and easily show off. Um, another purpose of this was, to, again, to make a portable HHO torch system. I wanted something uh, a little more powerful, well, definitely more powerful than my battery box configuration, which I showed you before with a 6-inch EBN dry cell. That worked great for a jeweler's torch, but I wanted to make something a little more powerful that maybe a plumber can use. So let's start with the box. Um, I bought a Stanley Fat Max toolbox, three-tiered toolbox. I got this at Lowe's. If I remember right, it ran about $80. Um, the thing folds out. The shelves fold backwards, which I'll show you in just a second. But if you spin it around, you notice, just like a suitcase, it has the wheels on the back. It has the handle that pulls up and down. Um, the handle I found, nice, obviously. Coil up your hose and your torch and just lean, lay it on like so. Um, let me spin it around again. I'll show you how it expands out. If you pull your hose off, set that there. Put your handle down. All you do is put your foot over here, grab this little silver handle, and just slide the shelves back like so. Okay, cables up here. I'm going to show you all the details on the inside in just one second, but basically what you have, the top toolbox area, is where I put my 12-volt power supply. This was just a, um, a power supply that I had on my bench, and again, I'm going to show you more details on that in just a second. The middle shelf is just for knickknacks, empty shelf, basically, and then the entire bottom section is where I have my dry cell, my reservoirs, and my bubblers. We'll go in tight now, and I'll show you the rest of it. Okay, let's take a look inside the box and let's start with the power supply. This is a 12 volt bench top power supply made by a company called Diamond Antenna. Um, this particular power supply is made for ham radios. As a matter of fact, I bought it at a place called the Ham Radio Outlet in Burbank, California. This uh, model number on this one is a GZV4000. It's a 40 amp continuous power supply. Uh, if I remember right, it was around $180, something like that. Um, had it for about, what, three months now? So far, so good. It seems to work really well. Uh, it's very light, too. That's another thing I like about it. Just uh, got to make sure that I, that I left enough room for ventilation here. Okay, moving from the top box with the power supply, the middle, the middle level is basically just storage shelves. Um, the bins here are basically open to put anything you'd like for storage in them, with the exception of this row right here. Uh, the way I routed the cables coming from the top box it goes down through the bottom of this first box through here and then what you have to do to allow the unit to slide forward and close you have to leave enough cable here so that it can move back and forth in here you have to leave this tray open I tried putting the divider in here but it wouldn't shut with that in there so you gotta take that divider out you run the cable in a loop fashion like that I've zip tied the bottom here to keep that in place and then as the unit closes this cable just slides forward and fills the rest of this tray works perfect Okay, we're going to move on to the bottom section now. Okay, let's look down inside the bottom box now. I'm going to start with the right-hand side. Here's a 37-plate, 8-inch EBN dry cell. Um, I added one plate to the 36-plate kit um, so that it allowed me to have five neutrals. Uh, I went out and splurged and got some really nice wire. I got this stuff from uh, a place that sells audio equipment for cars, high-end audio equipment. It's um, silicone coated on the outside. Uh, again, very expensive, but it's, it's well worth it. It's 8-gauge wire. I really, really like it. Um, other than that, let's go to the reservoirs. I, these were all I had. That's why I used them, number one. And it, I, I'm actually pretty happy with how it turned out. We'll see uh, if I run into heat issues with that. I may end up having to add a pump down the bottom. But basically what you have here is two 1.5-quart Flambeau uh, water reservoirs. I've been using, if you've seen my other videos, you've seen these Flambeau tanks. I'm real big fans of theirs. Uh, moving on from there, I have two of my stainless steel bubblers that I've used in the past. Um, these are 20 ounce stainless steel, 304 stainless steel drinking bottles that I've modified. Again, if you've seen my other videos, you've seen these bottles before. And they have the flash protectors. Now, I couldn't find a good way of mounting the steel 
the stainless steel bottles inside the box at first. I kept trying to figure out how can I tie them to the ground, to the bottom of the case, but I had the issue with the hose running down the middle. They were getting in the way. So then I finally come up with this idea. And what you're looking at here, um, I'll see if I can pull one out to show you. Well, the cables are kind of tight. But basically what you've got here is two um, water drinking bottle holders, sport bottle holders for a bicycle. What, eight bucks a piece down at the bicycle store? Uh, two screws going into the back, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, holds each, each of uh, the water bottles. It works fantastic. It makes it real easy when you want to do maintenance on a thing too, rather than having to, to do the zip ties like I did before. You just pull them out of the holders. It's great. Okay. Other than that, let's see. You can't really see it, but what, what happens is, okay, so here's the, here's the setup. You've got the HHO obviously comes out of the, in the, in the HHO and the water comes out of the cell into the first reservoir, dumps the water into there. The HHO gas travels through this tube into the next reservoir. The water circulates between the two reservoirs from this bottom tube. The water from the second reservoir is coming out and going down into the cell. Now there's also a T. I don't know if, you, if the camera's going to pick that up. There's a T right here. And I've got it also going to the back of the box. So that's a drain that I installed there. I just went to the plumbing section and bought a brass drain with, uh, you know, with a turn handle valve, with a ball valve. Seems to work really well. Um, going back to the box now, it goes, comes out of the secondary reservoir into the two bubblers, out of the second bubbler. It loops around down below and goes through a brass fitting. You can see it goes out of the back of the box to that brass fitting and then out to my tube, which I have coiled up and put around the back of the uh, handle in the back of the box. So there's my new 12 volt HHO torch system based on the 8 inch EBN dry cell and uh, off the shelf components that even the most basic electronic simpleton like myself can put together. So I hope you enjoyed it, YouTube. Take care.